欢迎回到《原始晚间新闻》。从十六到十九世纪，欧洲的奴隶贩子曾经把数以百万计的非洲人卖到美洲大陆去当奴隶。最近，美国有历史学家发表著作，指出全世界在学术界享有声誉的美国常春藤盟校，例如哈佛大学、耶鲁大学。布朗大学、哥伦比亚大学、普林斯顿大学、康奈尔大学，或是宾州大学等等名校，在创立的早期的发展经费，其实全部都是来自贩卖奴隶所得。号称世界一流的学府，创校基金却是以出卖人权的方式取得。这几家知名的大学并没有否认，而其中布朗大学也只表示，这其实是当时的时空背景所导致的。画面里的书封面是一本刚刚在今年九月推出的著作，印在书封面上的植物是常春藤，而作者在书中所要揭露的是美国常春藤盟校在好几个世纪以前创办的时候，经费来源原来大多只来自奴隶贸易的利润。画面里这一位是目前任教于麻省理工学院的历史学家 Craig Wilder。这位历史学家指出，在全球学术界享有声誉的常春藤盟校，也就是哈佛大学、耶鲁大学、布朗大学、哥伦比亚大学、普林斯顿大学、康奈尔大学、达特茅斯学院以及宾州大学这八所名校的崛起，全部都是和奴隶贸易有关。Talk about America's most elite universities. What relation do they have to slavery? I, I think there are multiple relationships. The first and、um, probably most poignant, most、um, provocative, is the relationship to the slave trade itself.、Um, in the middle of the 18th century, from 1746 to 1769, fewer than 25 years, less than a quarter century, the number of colleges in the British colonies triples from three to nine. The original three were Harvard, Yale, and William and Mary, and all of a sudden there were nine by 1769.、Um, and it triples in that 25-year period. That 25-year period actually coincides with the height of the slave trade.、Um, it's precisely the rise and the、um, elaboration of the Atlantic economy、um, based on the African slave trade that allows for this sort of fantastic articulation of、um, a new growth of the institutional infrastructure of the colony. Craig Wilder 指出，常春藤盟校的八所名校，除了经费来源是来自奴隶贸易之外，更有哈佛校长曾经将奴隶引进到校园里工作。例如，画面中这一位曾经于一六九二年至一七零一年担任哈佛校长的 Ingrid Mather 就是例子之一。Explain, for example, Mather. In fact, at Harvard University, there is a house named after. Yeah, the Mathers actually go back a long way, and so you know, and they actually are part of the colonial story of slavery too. Increase Mather. Um, of the second generation is actually、um, a president of Harvard,、um, and he uses his slave, which was the, a person given to him by his parish.、Um, he uses his slave to actually run the business of the college in the colonial period. The slave runs errands、um, between the various trustees,、um, and he writes in his diary that he sent his Negro to do various bits of work for the college. 画面里这一位是美国纪录片工作者 Katrina Brown。Katrina Brown 的祖先是画面里这一位于十六、十七世纪跨足美国商界和政坛的商人兼参议员 James DeWolf。长春藤盟校八所名校之一的布朗大学创校经费来源，主要就是来自 James DeWolf。最近 ，Katrina Brown 以 James d e v o l f 子孙的身份站出来，公开在媒体上反省自己家族的历史，并且针对自己家族与奴隶贸易的关系，制作了这一出纪录片。One day, my grandmother traced back. I was in seminary when I got a booklet in the mail that she wrote for all her grandchildren. She shared our family history, all the happy days. She also explained that the first DeWolf, Mark Anthony, came to Bristol as a sailor in 1744, and then she wrote, "I haven't stomach enough to describe the ensuing slave trade." 历史学家指出，当年北美洲的奴隶贩子所贩卖的奴隶当中，除了主要来自非洲的奴隶之外，也有美洲原住民族人。针对这些指控，常春藤联盟霸所名校并没有做出否认。其中，布朗大学表示，在十七世纪期间，当时的北美洲商人或多或少都会和奴隶贸易业者做生意，所以布朗大学创校的经费来源就难免会和奴隶贸易有所牵连。
记者邱德珍编译。